Anyway, the cutaway allows us to see how the gun works very well. And uh, we have the trigger bar. And on the other side, you can see the striker right here. Now, the tip has been removed so the gun cannot fire. Of course, you wouldn't want to fire this gun because someone would probably get hurt and not from the muzzle end. When we pull the trigger, though, you can see the striker is drawn back and then falls and fires the cartridge. Now, if the gun does not fire or the slide does not work, pulling the trigger again does not fire it again. The slide must come back. When the slide comes back, and I note the position of the striker, when the slide comes back, the striker is caught on the last of the end of the cocking stroke or uh, slide stroke and cocks it, oh, 30 percent or so. But it's not enough to fire it if it should fall. And then you pull the trigger, it's drawn back the rest of the way and falls. That fires the gun. Now in the process of that, if you will watch, there's a plunger right here, and when the trigger is pulled, the plunger is pushed up, out of the way of the striker. If that plunger is not pushed up, the striker cannot go forward to fire or hit a primer and fire the gun. And that's pushed up, and you can see the end of the plunger right there. And this cam on the trigger bar pushes that plunger up by the motion of the trigger bar itself. Now this gun has a two-stage trigger pull. It, it pulls to a certain weight and then it gets heavier, distinctly heavier. It gets heavier when the rear end of the cocking bar strikes this cam. And now as the cocking bar moves back, it must also move down against another spring. That adds weight and friction to the trigger pull and the trigger pull gets heavier. But that downward motion is what drops the striker. If I should pry this down, if I can at this point, it won't go. Yeah, it did. See, it fired. The reason it fired is because I was able to pull a striker down, the, the cocking bar down from in front of the striker, and so the striker is no longer supported by it. Well, that very same thing happens with this cam in the rear. When you pull the trigger and it hits it, now any further movement moves this cocking bar down until it drops or loses contact with the striker and it falls. The lockup, and you can see it pretty well in this system, consists of a cam that's right here and a cam in the barrel that matches up and when the slide is drawn back, the barrel strikes that and is drawn down. That's what unlocks it. Now that also stops the rearward motion of the barrel and the slide continues on to cycle to extract, eject, strip around, put it in the chamber, and when the lugs on the barrel line up with the lugs in the slide, or the lug in the slide, then the barrel can go up, and that cam shoves the barrel up, and it comes to rest, flat on flat, right there. Now, we didn't get a very good look at the lockup, so I'm going to turn the gun around, because it's cut up there, and you can see it beautifully. Now, you can't see the cam, but you see this surface goes clear across. It's just a straight shoulder on the barrel, and that's the edge of the ejection port. When they line up, the cam can then shove the barrel up. Now they cannot come apart because the barrel wants to go forward and the slide wants to go back and that surface, that square shoulder all the way across, prevents it from going back. That holds the two together. So they slide together rearward as a unit for a distance and then the barrel strikes the cam and unlocks. I'll get a rod and show you how that works. This should really test a plastic cleaning rod. I'll pretend like this is a bullet and remember there is a cartridge and remember that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. That means that as the bullet is propelled out the muzzle, the case is propelled equally hard rearward. And it pushes the barrel back. Now the barrel cannot unlock until it strikes the cam. So the barrel moves back. You see, I'm pushing on the slide slide is carrying the barrel back with it and then hits the cam, the barrel's drawn down and stopped and the slide continues on. This cam lock system it may not be exactly like many, but it, the principle is the same as virtually all cam locks. The barrel is held in lock position by sitting on this flat 
So we have two pieces of steel flat on flat right here. They all have something similar. Once it gets off the flat, it strikes this cam here, and the barrel can now go in, it has a notch here, and that notch can go into or around the cam that held it shut, and cam it shut, stops it, then as it closes, the reverse is true, that angle is just the opposite, you see, so it, as a slide pushes the barrel, and the barrel can go up, it is forced up, and sets on there, locked up. Okay, we can see the cam surfaces better from this angle. See, it's held shut, flat on flat. The barrel cannot go down, the barrel cannot lock up, unlock. But as it moves back, the forward cam will strike, flat on flat runs out. This part of the cam, this part of the cam finds that hole in the barrel lug right there so it can pass into it. This cam strikes that cam surface, the barrel is drawn down. You can see it being drawn down. And unlocked. Slide goes back, comes forward. When the lug of the barrel meets the forward edge of the ejection port, it can go up. That cam is trying to shove it up, so it does shove it up. It goes flat on flat, and the barrel cannot be pushed down. Holds it shut. Really simple. Designed a long, long time ago by John Browning, my hero. I can run through round, a few rounds to it so you can kind of watch it feed. And you can watch it better from this side, I think. Now it looks neat from the other side. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine how much fun you'd have if that had a real firing pin in it? Now the extractor is on the rim and you can see it here. There's the extractor, there's the rim. Strikes the ejector, throws it out. Picks up the next round. This plunger blocks the firing pin, as I mentioned earlier, and I can simulate that. The plunger is in the way of the firing pin. Now, if I could get that back and then pull this back. I can't. I can with the slide off. But what it does, it prevents the gun from firing. Should it be dropped hard or something, and the striker get enough inertia to come back and then come forward and strike a primer? So let's say it fell hard on the rear of the slide, and there's enough inertia to draw the striker back. It could come forward and fire a primer and discharge, except that this plunger will not have been turned off or pushed out of the way by the trigger. Because the trigger has a lock on it. Unless it's pulled, it can't. Unless you push that, the trigger can't go back. So if the gun is dropped hard, the trigger stays where it's at, the striker could come back, but this safety would come into play, and the gun would not fire. It's a pretty safe gun for a gun that doesn't have a manual safety that we're used to seeing. Comes apart interesting, or interestingly, 